again with this stuff? Yes. Look, um, my name is C.W. Chanter. In addition to being a debonair beard grower, I'm also the proponent and the main promulgator of a new world religion called Commonwealth Chanting. Um, you need to know and understand that this video is about Commonwealth Chanting specifically, and specifically I'm going to tell you about several achievements uh, of Commonwealth Chanting. Not achievements in the sense of things that we've done or I've done so far, uh, you know, milestones or anything like that, but things that I think are achieved by the invention of Commonwealth Chanting, and they kind of drive um, what it is and justify why I think it should exist. In our day and age, many people have come to say things like, I'm spiritual but not religious. And we've come to look at organizations like or Organized Religion and say things like, um, the problem is this, is that you have, a, you have a spiritual truth, you have a spiritual tradition, you have a message, a core belief, and around that core belief crystallizes baggage. A baggage known as organized religion that takes that central message and utilizes it for some other corporate-like or government-like goal, some control structure. Therefore, people say religion, bad, spirituality, good. We want to be spiritual, not religious. Now, I come at it from a different angle, and I say I've come to believe that, no, religious, not spiritual. And I'll explain what I, what I mean to the, to the degree that I can. Um, I may be su successful in the communication of these arguments for you. I may be unsuccessful for a variety of reasons. But this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I believe. And this is what I'm working towards. I've done my best to identify religion and the problems with religion and try to de-weaponize it. Commonwealth chanting as a structure, as a thing, is designed to be a religious body that has been de-weaponized, defanged, and that several of the things that people point to as being problematic of religion, things that turn the religion not into something that serves the believer, but rather as something that uses the believer. I've done my best to identify those things, deconstruct those things, and remove them from the process to leave a structure that can do what religions do, survive over long-term periods of human history, organically grow and support the crystallization of organic community, while at the same time alleviating the bad things, dogmatic beliefs, control, exploitation, um, both psychologically, psychological exploitation, as well as objective physical exploitation. So let's just dive right in and talk about three th main things that, want, that I want to emphasize that Commonwealth Chanting does um, that I think are hot to trot, that I'm, I'm, I'm proud of and I think are, are I define and, and have used the word for this video and in these notes, achievement. That's how I think about it. You may disagree. You may have your own arguments against me. That's fine. That's life. The first thing that you need to know and understand about Commonwealth chanting is this. Unlike other religions that have at their core a central spiritual belief or message that an organization surrounds to support and promote, there is no central core spiritual belief in Commonwealth chanting. Commonwealth chanting is a system that is designed to allow people of various belief structures, druids, ceremonial magicians, um, uh, excommunicated Mormons and you know homosexual Scientologists, uh, uh, members of the Church of Satan where there's no local grotto, whatever, sundry and all, various beliefs, various contradictory beliefs can exist within or 
are supposed to be able to exist within the confines of Commonwealth chanting. Commonwealth chanting is a series of personal and public practices, just like any organized religion. The only difference being that the content of those practices, the spiritual beliefs, the individual spiritual texts that are identified as, as the practitioner as being worthy of, of utilization and use, the individual spiritual beliefs and practices that are attractive to the individual practitioner are left to the individual practitioner. What you do when you what you bring to Commonwealth chanting and what you put in to the it's like a computer. What do you want to put on the hard drive? You can put anything you want on the hard drive, and the Commonwealth chanting operating system will allow you to interface and network with other individuals inside a superstructure without that dictation of core spiritual beliefs from the top to the bottom. You don't necessarily bring your beliefs from the bottom to the top. Your beliefs remember, remain your beliefs, but that's what we're trying to do. The de-weaponization is you do not have the natural occurrence or the natural occurrence of cognitive dissonance caused by contradictory spiritual beliefs or conflicts with an individual and a central spiritual belief structure are therefore attempted to be removed and therefore not present and therefore not a problem. Part of the argument that that I have that Commonwealth chanting represents a de-weaponized religious structure and therefore a less problematic religious structure. Right? Think of it as the matrix post Neo's revolution, right? The matrix is in place. Some people can choose to stay within the system. Some people can choose to jack out. And the people that remain in the system are no longer under the control of the agents, the architect, and the oracle. They are now free to use the system themselves. Another aspect or thing that is achieved by the removal of the process of beliefs coming from the top down is there's a non-limitation of community size by attraction to a central dogma. If I am selling you Roman Catholicism, the fact that I'm the Messiah, Scientology, uh, Levain Satanism, Animism, uh, dogmatic Satanism, you know, the belief that Satan is an actual deity that should be worshipped. There's only several people or a subset of the human population to which that can be sold or to which that would be attractive or usable or resonate with as true. By allowing to the creation of a system that allows people to bring their own personal beliefs into it, there's a non-limitation on the community size. Therefore, look, there's not enough ceremonial magicians in Boise, Idaho to survive shit if shit goes down or to build an organic community. Really, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I don't know that. You know, I, haven't, I haven't taken a census of ceremonial ma magicians in Boise, Idaho, but you know what I'm saying. The argument stands that there's not enough, you know, uh, cyber druids. To, to necessarily constitute a working and viable community in the real world. There might be, you can coalesce and, and create uh, communities online, but the problems with online communities is they can't help you move your furniture, okay? They can't break bread with you in the real world space. They can't put their arms around you, right? It's a limited form of communication. It's getting better all the time, right? Once there was merely text, then there was text and sound. Then there was webcams. And now there's fluid webcams. And now we can do this shit live. And now you can do Google Hangouts live. And you can do Periscope. And you can do this, that, and Vines or whatever. But the fact remains that if the electricity goes off, or if you really need, I need a friend, the, the cyber world, is cold comfort, 
Not that it isn't comfort. Not that real relationships can't grow and be fostered there. But it's not the same as a local community church, synagogue, temple, or mandir. It's just not. It would allow for, therefore, people of different stripes, different folks could come together and coalesce into organic communities, therefore commonwealth chanting, and therefore the communities fostered around commonwealth chanting have an increased viability or survivability over the course of human history. Things go up, things go down. I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I will say that one of my central arguments against for commonwealth chanting is that it is a potential solution barrier or tool for possible upcoming apocalyptic situation, right? There was a Roman Empire, and now there's no Roman Empire, right? There once was a Chinese, Ch Chinese emperor, he's out of a job. Things change over time. Things maintain stability, and then stability breaks down, and people sometimes need safety nets. Organized religions and communities that coalesce around organized religion can be a bulwark and a safety net if the alternative safety nets, like government, break down. There's no need for a cult compound in commonwealth chanting. The ideal and the, the idea we're trying to set up is not people in compounds. It's local community churches, just like, you know, the Seventh-day Adventists, and then there's the, you know, Anglican Church on Main Street, you know, uh, you know, see our town. You know what I mean? It's just designed to be a religion, not a cult, a religion. Moving on to another point. One thing that I have incorporated into Commonwealth Chanting that some may or may not think necessary, but I do find necessary to the central design and to the de-weaponization of commonwealth chanting as a religious structure is the distinguishment, the, the, the critical distinguishing of the physical objective world from the world of spirituality, theology, and cosmology. So, if you think of creationism, or literal interpretations of religious texts. The Bhagavad Gita says there's this many species, millions of species on planet Earth, therefore there's that many species of planet Earth. The creationist says the Bible, the Old Testament says that the world was created in this way, therefore it was created in this way. Or flat Earth, anything that involves the necessity of seeing one's spiritual beliefs and spiritual truths as being subsumed and incorporated into the actual physical objective world around us, I have chosen to reject and I have chosen to incorporate into commonwealth chanting that in addition to the, to the, to the subscribed personal and, and public practices that you can see outlined in other videos on my channel, there is to be an explicit rejection of from the, the commonwealth chanter of this notion of needing their spiritual truths and their spiritual beliefs to be reflected in the actual primal materia of physical reality. I forgot which office I was in, so hopefully my neighbors didn't bother them. Okay. What are, what are the points of this? What are the points of this, and why would I think it necessary? This is not designed to help Commonwealth chanting, and it doesn't need to underpin the other aspects of commonwealth chanting this is designed to reflect a spiritual truth and belief that i have found a psychological truth that i have found that i believe is real look commonwealth chanting is not um it's a thing it's not everything under the sun it's trying to be as narrowly defined and constructed as possible to continue and be viable over time so as to create communities and do what community does for people, but it is 
it's not designed to say to you, whatever you want to believe, believe. And you can call yourself a communist. No, there's, there's specific practices, and it's not that you come up with your own practices and say, I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing. There are, some, there are practices. There are public and private practices. This is what you do to be a common world chanter. There's things that, that I've set out and, and do in, the other, in the, my other writings and videos. Very, very simple. You can learn it in 30 minutes, and you can do it at your leisure. But the distinguishing of the physical objective world is designed to achieve two primary goals as I've defined them, or I've come to understand them. Uh, there might be secret treasures hidden within that I may discover over time. Number one, an escape valve for magic. One of the criticisms of, of organized religion or religion or spiritual practices in general is the notion that it will teach people false information. And that does two things. Number one, it, it might affect their survivability. And it's not good to be gullible. And it also just might um, hurt them. If you believe in mainstream, uh, the mainstream evangelical or interpretation of uh, Christian doctrine or dogma, or even Roman Catholic or Orthodox Christian uh, dogma, salvation is through uh, the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. There are sins, there are things like the Ten Commandments, there are strictures, there are rules, there are regulations. And behind that are spiritual arguments about what will happen if you fail to pay attention to the rules and misbehave. See hell, see karma, see any sort of tragedy that can happen, okay? You did what outside the circle of protection? Well, that's how the djinn got in. Escape valve for magic. Knowing that the physical objective world is distinguishable from our beliefs, which are just as real, because they exist and they are incorporated and then they come to be in the exact same way the physical world comes to be to us, through our senses, put together in our brain, translated into an experience. But by noticing that distinction, that it is, it is qualitatively and quantitatively different than the physical world you have an escape valve for magic i'm born again christian but i've just discovered i'm gay i'm gonna go to hell i'm gonna go to hell Whew. escape down into the physical world remind yourself yes i'm a born again christian but hey there is no lake of fire God isn't in this physical world. He's in the world of beliefs. I can escape here. I can go back. And I can remind myself, whew, calm down. Find a new church to go to. Find somewhere else, some way else to modify my, your own personal spiritual beliefs in order to cure that cognitive dissonance, right? And to find a way to continue to be alive in faith, alive in your spiritual religious community of Commonwealth Champion, but not feeling that contradiction. Also, it can work not only in the example of, of, of mainstream religious belief like Lake of Fire Christianity, it can also be for things like karma, the, the influences of curses, hexes, or spellcraft, um, anything like this. Come down to the physical and escape. The other thing it does is that it can place the gifts of, the, of your spirituality beyond the hands of the skeptic, the non-believer, or the scientist. Here's what I mean by this. I'm alive today and I'm in love with the world around me, but the tragedy is my dog done died, and three years ago, my mom passed away. But I know in my heart of hearts that I will see mom again in heaven with Spot. I know in my heart of hearts that I will not die as a result of this horrible disease, but will rather pass on to the wheel of karma 
the cycle of birth and death and reincarnation, and I will live again. I know I'm going to go to here or there or wherever. Along comes the skeptic, the non-believer, the scientist. If you believe that the girding or the support for your spiritual or theological or cosmological worldview resides within the physical world, then, then the non-believer, the atheist, the skeptic, and the scientist can attack you in the real world and may pop your balloon. Okay? And in doing so, they can all of a sudden take that wonderful, blissful feeling of knowing that you're going to see someone beyond and taint it, affect it. Okay? By knowing by making a distinction between the physical world and the real world, you're beyond reproach. Because the person says, Yes, but that's not true. And you can say you're absolutely one hundred percent right. It's not true in the physical world. It is only true in my mind. But excuse me while I kiss the sky. Because in my mind, I live on. And we'll live on and we'll see my loved ones again in the future. The skeptic, the scientist, and the atheist non-believer says, but that's, that's, that's not true. And you can merely say, so what? Making the distinction between the physical world and spiritual belief, don't worry. I'll go get my monthly checkup. Don't worry. If I get sick, I'll go to the mainstream doctor. Don't worry. If they tell me that the rover just landed on Mars or the electro you know, uh, telescope says this or that about the universe, I don't need to kvetch and complain about it. It's no skin off my nose. It doesn't affect me or my spiritual beliefs at all because my spiritual beliefs are not gilded, girded, and anchored to the physical world. They are mine, in my head. And remember, folks, if there's no God, okay, the atheistic and rationalist argument that you must know the reality of the reality of the reality and stay there it's a nonsensical argument okay if there's no God there's no God that means you're free to believe in God but that's quote unquote wrong well is it wrong to think that Led Zeppelin rocks more than Fleetwood Mac it is a personal subjective experience and you can be a scientist. You have no need to say, oh, oh, oh I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find evidence in the fossil record or falsify the fossil record or, or, or dismiss scientific findings because I need to make this meet that. I need to make the dictates of the, of the Holy Bible reach the physical world. Or I keep on using the Bible as an example. It could be, the, the, it could be anything, the, you know, any spiritual, Diamond Sutra, whatever the heck. The core teachings of Jainism, whatever. You could be a scientist with no inherent contradiction because you do not need God to be present. God can be God. DNA can be DNA, right? Reincarnation can exist in your head. It is what it is. And you can keep on keeping on. You can go to the doctor. You can teach mainstream science. You don't need to mess with mainstream science. You don't need to argue that your spiritual beliefs should be reflected, or your personal philosophies, picadillos, or psychological preferences be mirrored in the teaching of science of any stripe within any system or schooling. A simple argument, an argument that I'm making, an argument that you can find persuasive or non-persuasive, an argument that you can say supports my belief that maybe Commonwealth chanting is for you, or maybe it's just an argument that you say does not bring you to commonwealth chanting, but brings you to an acceptance of the validity of this argument put forward by C.W. Chanter. The last point that I'm going to make today. The fractured master. Just like points one and points two that just happened, the de-weaponization of religious superstructures. Many times, our religious structures, in fact, 
almost exclusively. When I designed Common World Chanting, I specifically tried to analyze what I knew and what I had learned from a lifetime of studying religious beliefs and structures. And it became very clear that almost always, always, there is a person, a persona, at the heart of the message. Whether it starts off as a real person who becomes mythologized over time, or a real per person who presents them as myth presents themselves as mythological in real in real time, or whether or not it is an aggregate or synch syncretic mythological character that is that comes is like a fictional character is a little bit of this, a little bit of that, may have its origins in historical real historical antecedents, but precedents. Sorry, I think. Yeah, precedence, um, but is not, you know, quote unquote, real or didn't really ever live. Oftentimes, these people are presented as superhuman characters who are ideals and betters than the believer, and that the believer is taught to look up to, to emulate, or to know is the only source of possible salvation. Jesus Christ, Muhammad, Arida Samraj, Sai Baba, right? You need them. That in both when the master is on the planet, present, or when they've disappeared and are just a historical figure can be psychologically detrimental to the believer, the perverted guru, or just the notion that they're superior and I'm inferior. You know what I mean? I'm humble, but I could be humbler, like Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Like the Buddha. Thank God for the Buddha. I need him real bad. He did what he did. Now I ain't so sad. Right? Later for that. It can lead to weaponization. Hey, now that you're inside making my tea, I can teach you a new secret teaching. Get down on your knees, close your eyes. Guru Guru has a nice surprise. I'm no good. C.W. Chanter is a fractured master. At the origin of Commonwealth Chanting is C.W. Chanter. I did not come... Uh, and I did not receive this message from an angel or a god or a deity or or because I'm, you know, God in the flesh and, and I brought it back, you know, from the heavens to, to restart, you know, the flame of religious belief on planet Earth. No. There are no special stories associated with my birth. My birthday wasn't particularly auspicious. It wasn't on a high holy day. You know what I mean? I didn't, at the age of three, do anything particularly special. If you do something special at the age of three, fan fucking fantastic. That's great. I mean, the only thing I did, you know, I didn't really do anything special in my life, really, except come up with this Commonwealth chanting thing. And this Commonwealth chanting thing was written in New Jersey, right? I had a dissatisfactory relationship with the previous religions that I desperately tried to join because I like religions and they were always very attractive to me. But I just couldn't find the right shoe that fit. So I learned how to cobble, and I cobbled together this stuff in New Jersey. While in the midst of my alcoholism, while in the midst of being a kind of, you know, degenerate, you know what I mean? But the great thing is this. Just like no one can come to you and displace your spirituality if you're a Commonwealth chanter, by demonstrating why your spirituality does not comport with the physical world around you, so too will no one, presumably, be able to say to you, like some people say to Scientologists about L. Ron Hubbard, or say to Buddhists about the Dalai Lama, Tibetan Buddhists about the Dalai Lama, right? You already know all my bullshit. 
my dirty underwear is already on the clothesline and I don't have no white picket fences because I don't fix my fences. If you watch my videos, you will hear me curse, carry on, talk about, hey, here's the other thing. Perfect in practice. Listen, I am a commonwealth chanter. I do practice what I preach. But just like any other person in any other religion, not necessarily a monk, a master, a priest, a rabbi, or, you know, a swami, or a, you know, a whatever. Just like you, I miss some days, right? Some days I forget my beads at the office and desperately want to chant at home and forgot, oh, damn it, I forgot my beads at the office. Sometimes I forget my beads at home when I'm at the office and desperately need to chant. Sometimes I remember to read a spiritual text on a given day. Sometimes I get to the end of the day and say, fuck it, I forgot. So you don't need to feel banged up and bad, right? If you're not as good as CW Chanter, because chances are, you're better than me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Chances are, you're more circumspect in your behavior. Your mouth is cleaner your sexual appetites less you know what I mean I would consider myself you know you know I like what I like you know what I mean I'm not scared about anyone busting out my internet history I really am not because they're not gonna you know find anything other than what they're gonna find they're gonna find some yeah they can find some nastiness you know what I mean because you know I'm a, I'm a heterosexual male with access to the internet at work at home and the local mall. Do you know what I mean? Everybody scratches an itch. Well, maybe not everybody, but this bad boy certainly does. You know what I mean? It's just human. There's no need for deification or any of that stuff unless you want to. I mean, if I had my druthers, people would treat me nice, but all I ask essentially, the only requirement of Commonwealth chanting is you simply recognize as a historical fact that it was created by this individual you see before you, C.W. Chanter. That's it. That's the only requirement. Beyond that, how you feel that, whether you feel that you're in relationship with me or out of relationship with me, whether you think you want to, you know, to uh, worship me as a guru and master, or whether you choose to ignore me, you know what I mean? As a mere author of a text, that's fine. That's all well and good. That's up to you. Like I said, the only requirement is a kind of historical acceptance of the fact that I did this shit. I'm the guy who did this. And beyond that, if you're thankful for me, if it helps you, that'd be great. If you want to think that I've got kundalini powers and can transmit Shaktipat to you, my belief is this, is that everything comes within in the eye of the believer. Everything exists within the eye of the believer. The miracle, the acceptance of the miracle, the transmission. There are people that argue that against me. I've got friends and family who are Christians. I've got friends and family who are Hindu. I've got friends and family who are all sorts of things. I believe what I believe. And I've come to know what I have come to know. So there you go. Three points on the de-weaponized Commonwealth chanting and three arguments for the viability of Commonwealth chanting. One last one. I said it before in brief, but I'll say it, I'll say it now again. Folks, if nothing bad ever happens, nothing bad ever happens. But if I'm lying, I'm dying. There's no guarantee that the first world nation that you may find yourself living in today is going to be sustained infinitely over time for your lifetime or the lifetime of your descendants. And religion has some advantages. Coming together in society has some advantages. Does it have disadvantages? Yes. There's, a, there's that play, what was it, uh, No Exit by Jean-Paul Sartre, that uh, play by the existential philosopher. One of the central lines in that play is, hell is other people. Yes, in the compromise of coming together in community, the individual becomes part and parcel. Part of the problem with the sovereign citizen thing. You have to accept the fact that you are held to a social contract, 
though you are supposed to get the benefits of that social contract, okay? But it doesn't change the fact that you don't pop out of your mom's crotch and then go walk off and get your own studio apartment and start looking for work in the morning. You are part of a community if you're a member of a family, if, if you're lucky enough. And you have to figure out how to strike that balance between the needs of the community and your personal needs for individuation. I believe that Commonwealth Chanting is a practice that can exist, can be sustainable over time, and can come to be viable over time, and more importantly, can help the people come together into communities that can survive if the fit hits the shan, and it effing will. Today's modern day, you don't know whether to believe the TV news or not believe the TV news. You don't know what alternative media outlet you can trust or not trust. You don't even know what's up or what's down. Why do people, so many people are, are potentially persuaded by the flatter phenomenon? Because at the end of the day, when you've been lied to, lied to, lied to, lied to, lied to, you say to yourself, I don't know what the fuck to believe. You can believe in this. I'm CW Chanter. This is Commonwealth Chanting. Think of it what you want. The allegations can be made that I'm trying, that I'm a cult leader trying to start a cult. Well, all I can say for myself is I've done my best to de-weaponize the structure and make it into a good viable structure that keeps the good and try to get rid of as much of the bad as possible. And there you go, folks. I love you. Have a hell of a day. Check out the other videos about Commonwealth Chanting, okay? It's great. It's a gas. I'm telling you. You know what I mean? I am who I am. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I hope these arguments, even if they didn't persuade you to become a Commonwealth Chanter, uh, were at least food for thought, okay? Reach out to me if you think you might be a Commonwealth Chanter and are interested in trying to help me grow this thing. Okay, I need help. Here's the thing, folks. What what happened in the initial uh, outset of, of trying to promulgate Commonwealth Chanting is something happened. People came to me, and the first wave of people came to me, really with needs. And, and it's not that that it's not in the beginning. I said, okay, I can't have a pastoral uh, element to to my job because I can't, you know, I can't, you know, build a house, you know, and feed you dinner, you know what I mean, and you know, do all these things for you. Um, but we could do things, you know, hopefully together, but I think people need to know and understand that if, that if you come to me and, you know, you know, you need, and this is not, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, but if you, if you come with needs, like I'll do my best to, to try and help you, but you know, you got to help a brother out too, just because I'll run out of energy. You know what I mean? Like I got, I got friends, I got, I got, I got my family, I got my kids, I got, you know, I got, I got to still, you know, try and make a dollar and a cent in this world to, to, oh, also check this out. Uh, Commonwealth Chanting doesn't really generate me any money. If you look at Commonwealth Chanting, how it functions and how it, how it's designed to operate, if you check out the other videos about Commonwealth Chanting, one of the de-weaponized things that we do is this, is that there's no, there's no money flowing upstream. There's no mo money flowing, like, really at parity. There's not really money. It's, we're just organizing, we're just maintaining the most limited aspect of the structure. We're not building buildings. We're setting up tents and teepees, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? We're not trying to build build anything. We're not trying to start hospitals. We're not incorporating. We're not doing any of that jazz. We're not going to buy a publishing house. We're not doing any of that shit. All we are is trying to create a religion for people who want who need religion. Everybody needs something. I think people need religion. Why do I think people need religion and spiritual practices? Because life is tough. You know what I mean? You don't want to end up in the elephant graveyard alone, if that makes sense. Anyway, so there you go, folks. But if you reach out to me, dude, you know, I'm more than willing to listen to your problems and everything, and that's cool. But, you know, think about ways that you might be able to also say, hey, you know, how could I help? You know, and I'll help you as way, any way I can, but you also have to understand that I'm somewhat inconsistent. I feel like I'm being a little bit more consistent as of late. But, you know, you're talking to a guy, you know, who's patting himself on the back because this is day six, you know what I mean, of, you know, me not at least, you know, demolishing a six-pack, you know, after work. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, I'm nothing special. I'm just CW Chanter. This is Commonwealth Chanting. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you all around. Okay, take care of yourselves. I love you. Bye-bye.